In 2005, one of the worst Marvel movies of all time was released. A movie so bad its theatrical release was cancelled. A movie so bad it was pushed back almost a year from its original release date even after the movie was already finished. A movie so bad that people behind the production were already calling it a disappointment before it was even released. And a movie so bad that if it hadn't been made, there may not be a Marvel Cinematic Universe. This is the story of Man-Thing, the forgotten Marvel movie. Man-Thing is a slightly lesser known Marvel character relegated often unfairly uh, to being a Swamp Thing ripoff. But all of that would change in the 2000s. At least that was the plan for Marvel and Artisan Entertainment when they announced that a Man-Thing movie was in development. However, the story doesn't actually start there. In the late 90s, Marvel was not in a great financial state. In the mid 90s, a comic bubble that had been growing since early in the decade finally popped and Marvel was in financial trouble. In 1996, Marvel owner Ron Perlman outlined a plan to merge Marvel Entertainment Group with Toy Biz to create Marvel Enterprises, while also creating Marvel Studios around the same time in an effort to help the failing company. The Marvel shareholders disagreed with this approach, and so he filed Marvel for bankruptcy in late 1996 in order to do this restructuring without the shareholders' permission. While he ultimately got what he wanted, Avi Arad and Ike Perlmutter were able to push Perlman out of the company. In the end, however, Marvel was in shambles, and their strategy for the next few years under Arad was to sell off the film rights of their characters to big studios to make movies. The movies advertise the comics, merchandising gets a massive boost, and they make money from the movies themselves. This gave birth to virtually all of the Marvel movies released in the 2000s. But Marvel soon noticed they had a bunch of smaller characters that big studios weren't interested in. Simultaneously, they wanted to have a shot at being more a part of the production of some of the movies based on their characters, which would lead to them getting a larger share of the profits in the end. So in the year 2000, Marvel announced a massive co-production deal with Artisan Entertainment to develop projects based off of 15 different Marvel characters. Artisan, an independent studio known for the Blair Witch Project, would co-produce movies based off of these characters with Marvel Enterprises. These were all characters that weren't getting bids from bigger studios and could be produced as movies with a lower than blockbuster budget. These included some characters well known to comic fans like Captain America, Black Panther, and Thor, as well as some lower tier characters like Deadpool, Iron Fist, Morbius, and Ant-Man. In 2001, hot off the success of X-Men and with movies like Blade 2 and Spider-Man on the way, Marvel and Artisan announced that Iron Fist would be their first movie. John Turman was announced to be writing the movie with Ray Park starring. However, ultimately the project would fizzle out in 2002 with Artisan shifting focus to developing a movie based on The Punisher. This was likely due to the popularity of more mature movies like Blade as well as the cheaper price tag that came with a Punisher movie versus an Iron Fist movie. While all of this was happening, Marvel and Artisan were also quietly developing a Man-Thing movie with Hans Rodionoff being hired to write the script in 2001. Man-Thing was also in the works because of the success of Blade, however, it wasn't just going to be a more mature movie in the same way that The Punisher was. Like Blade, it was also going to be a horror film. Marvel saw an opportunity to further open the door to the darker side of the Marvel Universe on screen, and it also helped, I'm sure, that horror films are generally cheaper to produce than action movies. In 2002, however, development on Man-Thing slowed down as artisans shifted their focus back to The Punisher, and in the meantime, Hans Rodionoff was actually hired by Marvel to write the script for a Werewolf by Night movie that was being developed by Dimension Films and Crystal Sky Productions. Rodionoff, if you couldn't tell, is a big fan of Marvel horror, and so it made sense for him to script the movie, which already had a story in place by Avi Arad, Ari Arad, and Kevin Feige. In the end, by 2003, Artisan was now refocused on both The Punisher and Man-Thing, with both entering production around the same time in late summer of 2003. At this point, Marvel had high hopes for both movies, but Man-Thing is a particularly interesting case. In 2003, Marvel was approached by a businessman named David Maisel, who pitched an idea for Marvel to refocus their efforts. Sure, the Artisan deal was done to give Marvel control over their characters in film and make more money off of them, but it had been three years and the first two films were finally entering production. Artisan was also in financial trouble at the time, and the original deal had, for the most part, fallen apart. 
there were a few other films in development, but even Thor and Captain America, two of the marquee characters of the Artisan deal, had their rights revert back to Marvel, who were preparing in 2003 to sell them respectively to Sony and Warner Brothers. The Artisan deal, upon its initial announcement, described it as opening up a quote-unquote franchise universe for Marvel, and Maisel thought that's what they should focus on. Superheroes were becoming more popular on the big screen, and a defining feature of superhero comics is that their storylines overlap and the continuity is shared across the different titles. Maisel thought that since Marvel still had the rights to a lot of their characters, they should just make their own movies that could have their own continuity with each other. They would then make all of the money from these films, and with this interconnecting web of continuity, the characters would coexist just like in the comics, and every movie would be sort of a semi-sequel to something that came before it, allowing for a mega franchise based on the comics. Marvel was skeptical of the idea, but wanted to see where it could go, and Maisel soon was president of Marvel. In October of 2003, as production wrapped on both The Punisher and Man-Thing, Marvel was more confident than ever in the films. Theatrical release dates were announced for both movies, with The Punisher getting an April 16, 2004 release and Man-Thing being released later in the same year on August 27th. This was big news for Man-Thing, as rumors over the past year had said that it was quite possible the film would be made direct-to-video though I couldn't find anything to really back that up. Why was Marvel so confident in Man-Thing? Well, they thought it could start off their vision for a shared universe. They thought Man-Thing could get their plan for a connected series of movies off the ground by establishing the horrific elements of the Marvel Universe, which would be the cheapest to adapt to film because, like I said, horror films are cheaper to produce. This is where we turn our attention to Marvel's quarterly current reports, which are these publicly filed documents of the time that showed what projects Marvel had in development, in production, and for what release dates, as well as having a transcribed Q&A between Marvel and their investors. Strangely enough, Marvel made no mention of Man-Thing in their Quarter 2 report that was published in August of 2003, but in their Quarter 3 report published in November, Man-Thing was on the schedule. And just as it suddenly appeared on the schedule, Marvel actually showcased it in their opening statements as a potential model for future movies. It's also worth noting that in that report, Alan Lipson described it as lending itself well to future sequels, and in a later report, Avi Arad described it as opening up the Marvel Horror Universe. And this is probably in relation to two other Marvel Horror projects in development from Hans Rodionov. The first of these was the Werewolf by Night movie that we've already talked about, but the second was a TV movie based off of Brother Voodoo, which was announced to be in the works at the Sci-Fi Channel in January of 2003 that could act as a backdoor pilot for a Brother Voodoo TV series. Marvel had big plans for the horror side of things, and Man-Thing would act as somewhat of a test run for that. But at the same time, there was now a bit of an elephant in the room in terms of the Artisan Marvel movies. Remember when I said that Artisan was in financial trouble? Well, they went up for sale in 2003. At one point, Marvel put their own hat in the ring for buying Artisan, presumably to use as a production studio for their own movies, or even just to fund their Marvel projects. However, ultimately, the winning bid would be submitted by Lionsgate, who would announce the deal at the end of October in 2003, uh, and the deal would end up being finalized in December. When the subject of the Lionsgate acquisition of Artisan came up in that November report, Avi Arad said that they would wait for The Punisher and Man-Thing to come out uh, before they make any decisions on their future with Lionsgate. However, just a few months later, it would be clear that this was not the case at all, and that Marvel was actually looking for Lionsgate to do what Artisan couldn't and start a shared universe of Marvel movies. In February of 2004, about a month and a half before The Punisher even hit theaters, Marvel and Lionsgate announced three new projects that were in development. Marvel announced that they had actually given Lionsgate options on both Iron Fist and Black Widow to make movies out of, and that The Punisher 2 was officially in development. But things started to take a little bit of a shift in May of 2004 when Marvel published their Quarter 1 report for the year. At this point, The Punisher had released in theaters just a few weeks prior, and it was doing... okay. 
even Marvel, who are trying to make the film seem like a big success, couldn't deny that its thunder had been taken by Kill Bill Volume 2, which had opened at exactly the same time. While The Punisher was number two at the box office that weekend, Kill Bill made $25 million, and The Punisher made $13 million. And in the end, Kill Bill would make $100 million more than The Punisher, which is kind of a lot when Kill Bill made $150 million and The Punisher made $50 million. So essentially, Kill Bill had received triple the amount of box office revenue as The Punisher did. Marvel, however, did remain optimistic that if the movie had been released at another time, it would have done better. In the same report on the topic of Man-Thing, Marvel announced that they had just received the final cut of the movie and that they were now waiting on test audiences to determine exactly when the film would release because it had changed from an August 27th release date to a more vague October 2004 release window. But Marvel's quarter two current report from the end of July painted a much less optimistic picture about the future of Man-Thing. It had now been listed as part of the release slate with a TBD release date. And when asked about this, Avi Arad said that he had just been busy with the press for Spider-Man 2 and that soon Lionsgate and them would decide on an actual release date, but that it would probably be pushed to next year. Man-Thing would not be listed or mentioned in any of Marvel's current reports ever again. Though I guess this does kind of go to show you how subjective these reports really are. They aren't so much completely the facts of what's going on with Marvel and more what Marvel wants to present to investors in terms of projects that they want to show are in development or in the works with release dates that may not 100% be accurate to what the studio thinks but more just what Marvel thinks the investors will like and what they think the movie will end up doing and overall they just want to paint themselves in a good light to investors and so if they have a movie that potentially isn't doing that well they just don't talk about it even though it exists because apparently after Man-Thing began to be shown to test audiences Marvel no longer wanted to talk about the movie to their investors. The Punisher sequel was in limbo for a bit, though the movie actually had really great DVD sales, which brought Lionsgate's focus back. However, ultimately the movie would languish in development for a while, with Marvel and Lionsgate fighting over what exactly the movie should be, with eventually them releasing a soft reboot called Punisher Warzone in 2008. At the same time, there was little to no progress on the Iron Fist film, and Lionsgate wasn't incredibly responsive to the script for Black Widow, which was being written by David Hayter, who was also hired to direct, and this movie would never come to be either. While I couldn't find anything to confirm them to be true, rumors at the time said that Man-Thing's test screenings went horribly, and this seems to be the case considering Marvel's attitude about the movie at the time. At the same time Marvel started going dark on their progress with Man-Thing, they announced a new deal set up with Lionsgate for them to produce a series of animated direct-to-DVD movies based off of Marvel, with the first film being an Avengers-based movie, releasing in the first quarter of 2006. It's clear this soon became the main focus between Marvel and Lionsgate, as all of Lionsgate's other live-action Marvel films besides The Punisher 2 were dropped completely from Marvel's release slates in later current reports. And it seems around this time, Man-Thing's release may have been completely cancelled by Lionsgate. I mean, the movie only cost $5 million to produce, so it wasn't completely out of the question to just can the movie and write off the loss. Avi Arad himself was actually responsible a decade prior for another low-budget Marvel movie never getting released, that being the 1994 Fantastic Four film, which Arad made sure was never released because he wanted future Marvel movies to happen and thought that it would taint Marvel's reputation. And I think something very similar happened here. Here. When David Mazel first pitched his idea for an interconnected Marvel Universe, he wanted Marvel to produce the movies themselves, though it still seemed that throughout 2003 and 2004, Marvel was hoping that Lionsgate would be able to produce these movies with them so that they would have less financial risk. But by the end of 2004, they realized this wasn't going to be happening. Their first movie didn't go how they planned, and the sequel was kind of in shambles. The other Marvel movies at Lionsgate weren't coming together very well, and then they had 
one other movie that they had fully made that may never see the light of day at this point. And on top of it all, one of their movies, which Marvel had hoped would have major potential in this ambition of theirs, did not turn out at all the way they had hoped. Maisel has gone on record saying that the reason why Marvel made their animated movies deal with Lionsgate was to show other potential investors that other people had invested in Marvel for long-term projects based off of their Marvel comics. This was because Marvel finally decided to make their own movies. In April of 2005, Marvel announced a new deal with Merrill Lynch to receive an investment of $525 million to make a series of movies based off of their characters independently. And it seems Man-Thing was the last straw. It's certainly possible Lionsgate just didn't want to release the movie, but I think it's just as plausible that Marvel didn't want the movie released because they were trying to get funding to produce these massive Hollywood films and they didn't want this low budget bad movie to make it seem like their characters weren't worthwhile. After all, like I said, this is the exact reason why Avi Arad stopped the release of Fantastic Four 1994. Marvel and Lionsgate even tried one more time to see if test screenings for Man-Thing would turn out better, where they screamed the film at the American film market in November of 2004, but the reviews were terrible. But ultimately, the movie would actually end up getting released whether Marvel wanted it to or not, because in January of 2004, it was announced that the Sci-Fi Channel had actually picked up the movie to air that year. It's worth noting that Sci-Fi were the same ones to start development on a Brother Voodoo TV series two years prior that was actually at this point still in development on the Marvel Current reports, even though there had been no updates since then. It's possible that Sci-Fi picked up Man-Thing as a last ditch effort to try to get the Marvel Horror Universe off the ground. However, when Man-Thing finally aired on the Sci-Fi Channel in May of 2005, just weeks after the Merrill Lynch deal was announced, it was barely noticed, and the few people that did notice it did not like what they saw. Hans Rodionoff did an interview with the website Comics Continuum around the time that Man-Thing was released, and he was asked if he was disappointed that the movie wasn't getting the originally intended theatrical release. He had this to say, Man-Thing has been a disappointment to me in a number of ways, but the non-theatrical release is the least of them. Under the circumstances, I think it's a good thing that it's premiering on the Sci-Fi Channel. This supports the idea that perhaps the movie wasn't going to be released at all, and it was finally released as a TV movie in a last-ditch effort to see if there was any interest in the horror side of Marvel, or at least to get some money in DVD sales. So, what went wrong? Well, most things end up leading back to the production side and the money. Avi Arad said that in retrospect, he thought it didn't turn out well because the movie was filmed in Sydney and they had no Marvel representatives there to oversee the movie. But Rodunov reflected in 2010 saying he thought it had more to do with Brett Leonard's direction on the movie saying that while he respected Leonard as a director, he thought he didn't really understand the character and that the movie suffered for it. Personally, I think the problem with the movie is that the budget was too small to actually showcase what they wanted to do. Rodionoff wanted to make a horror movie with the Man-Thing as the villain, throwing out a lot of the comic stuff in favor of portraying Man-Thing as this eldritch horror that could not possibly be understood by humans. Well, that's an interesting idea, the budget for this movie was only enough to accommodate a basic horror film in a swamp. Some of this movie actually looks really good when you consider how much money that they had, but some of this movie also looks like it's a parody of a commercial for Gator Skin Boots or something. This was supposed to be the start of something big, and sci-fi was still holding out hope that Man-Thing could potentially launch this horror universe. But this was the final nail in the coffin. In Marvel's third quarterly report of 2005, Brother Voodoo was nowhere to be found. But look at it this way. This movie was the reason why Marvel decided they wanted to make movies themselves. When it seemed this movie may not be released at all, I'm sure it clicked in Avi Arad's mind that even though they had released some good movies in the intervening time, in a way, Marvel had achieved no progress since 1994 with the Fantastic Four movie. He personally blamed Marvel's lack of involvement in the film as the reason why it is a failure. And I think that's the reason why he finally took the jump and decided to let Marvel take the risk and make movies themselves. 
I first took a look at this movie because I wanted to understand why I had pretty much never heard anyone talk about it, and to see why the few things I heard were so bad. And the thing is, so many people overlook Man-Thing, seeing it as barely a step above the unreleased films, like Fantastic Four and Batgirl. But it's so much more than that. This movie is what led to the biggest franchise of all time. And I don't know if I'll ever say this again, but maybe Avi Arad was right about Marvel's lack of involvement being the reason this movie didn't work. Because now they've released Werewolf by Night, which accomplished everything this movie tried to do and more. It's a pilot for a Marvel horror series, and unlike Man-Thing, which was relegated to TV, Werewolf by Night was done for the medium. It was a test, and one that passed with flying colors. And it just goes to show you that bad things can lead to good things, and a good idea can still turn out badly. Anyways, I hope you liked the video. Let me know what you think of Man-Thing's return in Werewolf by Night, and what you think of this terrible movie and how it kind of led to Avengers Endgame happening. I'll see you guys next time.